This week we're talking about collagen. Now collagen supplements are like one of those things that are like zombies. They die and then they come back. And so now people are talking about collagen being a great protein for building muscle and skin elasticity and all this sort of stuff. But where do the claims stand in relation to the science? Now, what I can tell you is that in terms of muscle building, collagen is a pretty shit supplement. Collagen does have all nine essential amino acids, but in extremely low levels. And in fact, it's pretty much the worst source of leucine there is. Leucine is the amino acid responsible for triggering muscle anabolism. And the leucine content of your standard protein sources is anywhere from like seven to 8%. If you get to egg protein, you're talking about 9%. Uh, whey protein is like 11, 12%. So a really good source of, of leucine. Um, collagen is like 3% leucine. It's shit. As far as muscle building goes, can you build muscle with collagen protein? Probably, but are you going to build as much as with other protein sources? Not based on the data. Now, the hair, skin, and nails, and joint health, that's another claim in its entirety. And I'll be honest, I've been very skeptical of these claims for one simple reason. When you ingest a protein orally, your stomach acid, which is six molar hydrochloric acid, and it also contains uh, pepsin and pepsinogen, break down those proteins. And then when they hit the small intestine, your proteases break them down further into constitutive amino acids. A collagen protein may be several hundred amino acids long, and it just gets chopped up during digestion, that's not gonna be a bioactive protein getting into circulation. You're just gonna have amino acids. However, I may have to eat a little bit of crow on this because di and tripeptides, so two and three amino acid sequence uh, short proteins, can get into circulation. There is a dipeptide in collagen called prolyl hydroxyproline that does appear to get into circulation from digestion. So there are di and tripeptides, so two and three amino acid sequenced peptides that can get into circulation. And this one in particular appears to confer some benefits when it comes to skin elasticity. Now, the studies this was done in were in elderly people that have already had uh, their skin uh, lose some elasticity. So we don't know if young people taking it, it's, if it's gonna have preventative effects. So we don't know that. You can hypothesize that maybe it would. But when it comes to elderly people, yes, it does appear that it may have some modest benefits. We don't know about joints and that sort of thing. Again, maybe there are some benefits. What I will say is make sure you're taking some sort of hydrolyzed collagen or prolyl hydroxyproline itself because that's what's gonna confer the benefits. If you're just taking a regular impact, intact collagen supplement, you may not be getting this and you need to get it in either anywhere from 2.5 to 10 grams of collagen supplement if you're gonna get these benefits. Now again, it's not gonna make a huge difference, but I would say get the prolyl hydroxyproline if you can find it somewhere because that seems to be the active, bioactive component of this protein. But if you're using it for muscle building, it's pretty crap. And if you're vegan and you'd rather, and you would wanna use some sort of non-meat protein source, um, there's definitely better vegan protein sources out there like pea protein, even soy protein. Actually, corn protein is really high in leucine. So if you can find a corn protein isolate, that's great.